Hello, Carol Taylor Carney here at Pal Lane Arts, and I am with Marilyn Stubblebind and her artwork, and she is going to tell us something about it. Marilyn? Hi. Um, this painting uh, on a board is called uh, Rising. It's uh, acrylic, um, and uh, uh how I can explain this, this was sort of a, a new departure in one area in that instead of uh, the ge geometry going across, it was going up. Mm -hmm. So if we look at uh, this, uh, you might say, well, it wasn't a preparatory drawing at, or painting at first. This is on paper. Um, I didn't know I was going to be painting that, but... Um, I was used to going across, so I painted this on paper, and then, you know, I turned it around and kind of liked the way it uh, <laughs> shot up. Yeah. So, you know, just uh, kind of a serendipity, and um, <clears throat> so I decided to, you know, have um, this size board, which I had never worked with before, but... I uh, really liked working with that, and uh, so I changed directions. So while we're talking about that, once I decided to do um, the direction for me, it goes up. I uh, want to show you some uh, sketches I usually do before I do any work. So, uh, of course, besides measuring, um, color choices are important. And I have worked with orange, yellow, and green for, you know, over a decade. Wow. And um, so I, I liked it, but uh, I kind of changed the, uh, you know, there's uh, some tinted green, some tinted yellow, and orange, which I really had never done before. But I think, you know, it gives kind of a, Kind of a glow to the painting that I really like. Well, it gives a nice rising motion to yeah. it. Um, yeah. I find it interesting the dimension that you chose because it's perfect for a rising piece because if it's more square or squat rectangular, you wouldn't have the same feeling of going up and the journey traveling up. Uh, right. Well, so, yeah. No, go ahead, Carol. No, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, so color was important, and of course I kind of gravitate to those three colors, orange, yellow, and green. But I did try, you know, to complement the yellow with a purple, and then uh, the orange with a complementary blue. But uh, I just kept going back to the orange, yellow, and green. So this is a, this is a fun part of the process for me. I love the process. And uh, then... You know, when I actually get to the painting, you know, that's that's the work of it. And uh, to get it to, I always like the drawings better. I don't know about you. <laughs> but, you know, there's just a, a little bit more um, energy. Well, you're solving, you're solving the puzzle. Like, you're putting the puzzle together there. <laughs> and then she says that, and I'm like, when I do the study, there's possibilities. Because I haven't done the painting. Right. Where yeah. the painting seems to be the culmination of all yeah. this, and then I step back mm -hmm. and I go, okay, now what am I doing next? Right, yeah, so this is when you're doing the painting, you're locked in. You've already done the measuring or I've done the measuring, I've done the taping, decided on everything, and um, sometimes it doesn't quite work out. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was this uh, light orange that I had to kind of play around with a bit more to get it to to the um, to get it to the color that uh, I felt complemented the, the rest of the painting. Um, but a lot of times, because of all the tape on the canvas I, or, or the board, I can't really tell what it's going to look like <laughs> right, right <laughs> off. So sometimes it's like, oh, shock city. But um, uh, I, I think I, I got it pretty close. So it's a little darker, but you're right. With uh, doing the sketches, there's all sorts of possibilities. You're roaming around. It's wonderful. So um, yeah. Anyway. So when you so when you went and uh, decided to do to do this, take take that and turn it vertical. Um, what what were you thinking of? Because you you said that you go and you um, tape things. 
in order to get the pattern that you do. And the really crisp lines. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, where should I start in answering that? Um, <laughs> lots of possibilities. Like, a decade ago, two decades ago. Um, I uh, haven't always painted like this. I, you know, I've been doing art for a while. So um, I guess uh, I started off with uh, more, um, it wasn't hard edge abstraction. It was uh, more, you know, uh, uh, curvilinear lines and, you know, different uh, accents throughout the painting. And, um, but then after a while I thought, well, what do I like to look at? Well, I like to look at very minimal paintings. Um, so um, I tried it out and it's pretty difficult yeah. to do something <laughs> that's a little, uh, that's more minimal. That doesn't have a whole bunch of details in it. And so my first attempt, I remember I did a few and, and it's like, well, I'm almost copying such and such an artist, but it, it falls flat to me. So I, I kind of pushed it aside for a long time and then came back to it. Um, and, uh, you know, and now I mostly do this, but sometimes I'll, I'll verge into other, you know, more, more non-geometric uh, abstraction. When, but did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> well, I have a question okay. specifically about um, the taping process and how you sequence that. It seems like, uh, even from the sketches and all of that, that you not only are planning out how the colors will align and what colors to use, but you have to have a very specific plan as to how you approach the panel. How do you work out that plan? What does your actual process of working on the panel look like? Yeah, like what I was going to ask you, <coughs> these are drawn on grid paper. Do you grid this first before you tape it? Or do anything like that to give you the idea? Like I would get lost. I would get lost too. And I like so and you also said a really interesting thing where you said sometimes when you pull the tape off, it's a little bit of a surprise. Right. And so I'm wondering what that process looks like for you mm -hmm. because I think taping is a process that we're familiar with in concept, but the actual we don't always think about how that actually gets enacted when working on a piece. Especially something's complex. Yeah, because this is complex. Right. So, right, I do uh, measure everything and pencil in everything uh, before I get started. So the first thing I probably had to do was work out, you know, how big did I want these, like, columns. Uh, I call them columns because no, when sense. I was mm -hmm. doing it, um, sometimes I think in architectural terms. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is definitely, um, you know, aligned with that kind of nonverbal yeah. thought, you know, just picture It's architectonic. It really, yeah. it really is. And that's not always the case in sometimes the color is the kind of the arch architecture. So, um, but this, I was really thinking of, uh, of columns. Um, so do you question, work by do you work by column? Um, on this one, I'm not. I think I because this was the orange. Uh, those uh, two oranges were the most difficult to kind of figure out because even that orange isn't like straight out of the tube orange. Yeah. Um, I, um, I I worked on this first, and I think I even had to change like the this lighter yellow. Because uh, in order to get that, if, even if you like standing over here, I can see there's, it's not all flat. It's not all the same because I'm mixing it, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it's kind of wider here and more yellow over there. Well, it's really so cool. there's this uh, kind of resonance from it. That, well, I was really glad to see um, how you're playing with value in this because um, part of one of the, Part of the thing that makes this work so well is that nothing pops off. It stays together. It stays back. It is a flat painting. Mm -hmm. We get the sense of flat. And, and the scary thing is, is that a color, particularly an orange, should be hitting me in the nose when I look at this. Yeah. And it just stays back there. Yeah. So you really understand your saturations here, too. 
Yeah, well, I, you know, it's all like uh, visual understanding and uh, not nonverbal. I'm not thinking, you know, 30 percent uh, white. Or that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, but um, yeah. So the color for this one was very important because that, as I'm looking at it now, I, I, I don't even think uh, this yellow probably had a, a little white in it as well. I, I'm trying to get into the habit of writing down all my the colors. <laughs> I used to keep a color log, right? Right, yeah. Um, so I could talk about it with more authority. But I, I think all the other colors did have some white in it. Yeah. Um, but uh, one thing I, I would like to say uh, is that I think in all, most of my work, say 98% of it, it's uh, part of a whole so um, if we look at this this one, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's this part, that part. You know, if we extended it, it right. this is just part of something and same here. Well, if we looked past the edge of the board, you know, it could continue or downward or on either side. So that concept of, uh, of trying to grab on to uh, a moment that, well, it's gone, yeah, and yeah. it's going to continue, and, and there's other moments. So I think that kind of concept is um, is uh, has always concerned me. So more like here we are on planet Earth, right? But surrounded by we're a just, whole mystery. Yeah. We're it, we're in a context of a larger world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, or a universe. Yes. <laughs> Well, one of the things I, I admire about your work, too, and it relates to what you're saying, is there are people who would have wanted to throw this in a frame. And the thing is, is a frame would have contained it. And you do two things. By putting it on this box, it's deep. And people should, I'm just going to turn it like this. So you can see how it's deep this is. Two yeah. inches or more. Yeah. yeah. So it sits on the wall, so it has the ability to extend, like you said, and yet it separates itself because it'll get that little shadow. Yeah. So which makes it so perfect for so many places. Uh, yeah. No. Right. Um, it makes it its own world. It's part of this world. It really changes people's thinking. Um, thank you for for mentioning noted noticing that um, because. Uh, you know, I, I didn't think about it I, uh, in that context. And sometimes I get a narrower frame mm -hmm. or board and uh, because um, I don't want it to be so separate right. that I, I want it to be like part of the wall. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, uh, but I like your, thank you for offering your perception. But all these choices that you're making, and I want young artists to be listening to this because it's very important. <laughs> All these choices that you make are also part of the statement of the piece. Yes. Uh, you know, and so there's, uh, it might look like uh, very minimal, uh, but the concept behind it is, uh, is much larger. So um, I was reading about James Turrell, mm -hmm. and um, uh, he had this uh, phrase called uh, wordless thought. Yeah. And how, like, when people look at his work, uh, well, there's no focus, there's no detail, et cetera. And so it brings it back on the viewer um, to experience it themselves. Right. So, um, you know, when I, when I um, think about my work, I thought, well, I can uh, sort of apply that to my work because... Uh, you know, not that I want to be. No, <laughs> you know, he's yeah, also he's yeah, he's like, of color. You know, right. he's up there. Um, but um, you know, I think that's true. Like some, uh, a lot of people when they look at art, they want the details. They want the story to be evident. And um, here, the the story is the color, relationships, and uh, you know, where does that take you? Um, and just be kind of bathed in the the experience of, of looking at the color 
<laughs> just yeah. appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. yeah. And don't don't try to insert a narrative. This is not the narrative as far as what I can tell mm -hmm. from what you've been saying has more to do with how this can grow into your environment right. than yeah. um wait, you know, there's this orange next to this orange next to this yellow with this slightly different yellow in the green. It it's all those things. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so I mean, for me, like it's always about this sense of wonder. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, so, and I think of time as well. Uh, and uh, one um, work of art from the uh, Greek relief that I always kind of have referred to as kind of amused in some way is a relief of a, um, a, a woman, a young woman. Oh, sideways, walking with a, a small uh, urn, and, uh, she, you know, her one of her, her foot is, like, raised, like right. she's going to take that next step, and, of course, she's wearing this, lo you know, lovely uh, robe, um, so just that, uh, it's from the past, she's going forward, it's a moment in time, and I always imagine her bathed in light, yeah. and so it's, that's just been kind of a, you know, that motivation to go forward and to just present uh, the beauty of, you know, in my particular ability uh, to... Uh, well, the, yeah. de the delight. Yeah. The, de the delight of being in a world where these things these happen. Mysteries. Yeah, yes, and, and we can relate it to both architecture we could relate it to, I mean, you could literally see the robe of this woman as you were talking about, yeah. like, yes, is it would catch the different pieces well, of light. Mm -hmm. And time and expansiveness. Yes. Like, it's a perfect piece to discuss change because it's about both the change of time, the change of shapes, the change of colors, which made it perfect for change lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank and, you. and thank everyone else. And we hope that you come see this at the Changeling Show at Powling Arts through, through November 20th.